What now is the potential difference? Well, VA minus VB minus VB is the integral in going from A to B of E dot DL. So I go from here to here, so I write down for DL, I write down DX, of course, because I call that the X direction now. So I will write down here dot DX. And so this is minus 10 to the fifth times the integral in going from A to B of X roof dot dx. Looks scary, but it is trivial. The X roof is the unit vector in this direction. And dx is a little vector dx in this direction. So they're both in the same direction. So the cosine, the angle between the two is one. So I can forget about vectors, I can forget about the dot. And so this becomes minus 10 to the fifth times the integral in going from A to B of the X. And that is trivial. That is minus 10 to the fifth times the location. I have to do the integral between A and B. So I get here X of B minus X of A. And if this is 10 to the minus 2 meters, to go from here to here is 1 centimeter, I must multiply this by 10 to the minus 2, so I get that this is minus 1,000 volts. So A is 1,000 volts lower than B. That's what it means. And that's something that's very physical. Notice that if you go from left to right, that the potential grows linearly. This is lower than that. And if you, in your head, use planes like this, parallel to the other planes, each one of those planes would be equipotentials. They would everywhere have the same potential. And gradually, when you move it up, your potential increases. But notice the electric field goes from plus to minus in the opposite direction. And that's always the reason that's behind that, that minus sign. Now clearly, I'm always free to choose where I choose my zero potential. We discussed that last time. You don't always have to choose infinitely far zero. So I could choose this arbitrarily to be zero potential. This would then be plus 1,000. And so you then find that the potential V is then simply 10 to the fifth times X. When X is zero, you find the potential to be zero. And when X is one centimeter, you find the potential to be 1,000 volts. And that then goes together with the electric field equals minus 10 to the fifth in this direction. And so this is extremely physical. This is something that you would have whenever we deal with parallel plates. As long as there's no charge moving, and we're dealing with solid conductors, so we have static electric fields, charges are not heavily moving, then the field inside the conductor is always zero. Not the case in a non-conductor, only in a conductor, because conductors have free electrons to move, and if these free electrons see electric fields inside, which they may, they start to move until they experience no longer a force, thereby they kill the electric field inside. So the charge in the conductor always rearranges itself so that the electric field becomes zero if the field is a static field, not rapidly changing. And so now I want to evaluate with you the situation that I'm going to charge a solid conductor and ask myself the question, where does the charge Go. In honor of um, Valentine's Day, let's take a solid hard, steel hard. It's solid all the way throughout. So this is a solid conductor. 
and I bring on this conductor charge from the outside. Plus or minus, let's just take plus for now. And so the question that I'm asking you now, this is a conductor, this is not an insulator, the story for insulators is totally different. This has free moving electrons inside. I'm asking you now if I touch this conducting heart, by the way, your heart is a very good conductor. Uh, if you touch this conducting heart, where would this charge end up? Where would it go to? And I leave you with three choices. And we'll have a vote on that. The first choice is that the plus charges would uniformly distribute for throughout. The possibility. The second possibility, less likely, I think, that all the charge will go to one place there. I don't know which place that would be, but maybe. And then the third possibility is that maybe the charge will uniformly distribute itself only on the outer surface. And then the fourth possibility is none of the above. All these suggestions I made were wrong. Who would think that the charge might uniformly distribute it throughout the conductor? I see one or two hands. That's good. Don't feel ashamed of raising your hands. In the worst case, you're wrong. I've been so many times wrong when it comes to this. Don't feel bad about that. Who thinks that the charge will all go to one point in the heart? You have the courage? You think it will go to one point? Charge repels each other, right? But that doesn't seem likely. Who thinks that it will uniformly distribute itself on the outer surface? Who thinks none of the above? Very good. Well, those who suggested that it might be uniform on the outside, I would still give them a B. But it's not uniform, as you will see. But it will go exclusively to the outside, and I will prove that now to you. Let us first look for that ridiculous possibility that the charge would somehow end up in the conductor itself. I take here a Gaussian surface, which is a closed surface. I know inside the conductor, if we have electrostatic fields, not fastly moving charges, but it's a static field, I know that the E field everywhere must be zero on the surface. This is a closed surface. So the integral of E dot the A equation one is zero. That means the charge inside my sphere is zero, and so there cannot be any charge. So Gauss law immediately kills the possibility that there would be any charge inside this conductor. So that's out of the question. So that leaves you only with one.